Welcome to Three Devs and a Maybe, the podcast series for beginner web developers and general web enthusiasts. Now, introducing your show hosts, Michael Budd, Fraser Hart, Lewis Keynes, and Ed Mann. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Three Devs and a Maybe, the web development podcast where we like to ramble about specific topics in web development, of which we don't actually have a specific topic. So today is going to be a bit of a ramble show. Um, oh, yeah, we don't ramble. We oh, talk nothing okay. but absolute fact and uh, fact, yeah, no fiction. Ramble. Yeah, a lot absolute of absolute fact, no fiction web development podcast <laughs> that uh, that we like to put out for you people. So starting as Ed is first left, and we read books from left to right. So I will start with Ed. Hello, um, Ed. How you doing? I'm very good, thank you, sir. Yeah, good, very good. 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 Oh, actually, I might as well say who else we've got here. We've got Lewis as well with us here. Boo! Hey, Jacob. Hey. Love you, Lou. Wow. <laughs> and we're expecting a uh, certain Michael Budd, but he's uh, cleaning up some baby sick, we understand right now. So, yeah, or his as soon own as he's, clean... he's saying the baby. Or his own sick. Sure, yeah, he's kind I'm of like, sure yeah. You can kind of, you know, it's like, oh, the baby did it. You know, it's yeah. like a dog, you know, when it's like, oh, that smell. Oh, the dog did it now. It is the perfect excuse, isn't it? And like, we have known the baby to throw up from time to time. So, it's yeah, it's kind of an easy one to, to kind of palm off on him. But yeah. uh, I, I didn't need it that day when we were down there, did I? It was a bit worse for wear that day. And uh, <laughs> see, yeah, seeing a baby projectile vomit over, over Mick, well, well, although it was funny. Well, beautiful it was, yeah. Uh, it was a beautiful it, sight. It was. Yeah, it was. It didn't, it didn't help my, my predicament at the time. Certainly. Uh, never mind. <laughs> so, uh, Ed, have you had a, an interesting week? Uh, it's been good, yeah. Uh, what have I been up to? Uh, well, I saw you guys yesterday. You we, uh, did. We, yeah, we did. Oh, we we, we went, definitely saw you. <laughs> we went... <laughs> we went <laughs> you you may have week. seen more than one of us. <laughs> we uh, went to the greatest place in the world, Selling. In we Kent. did. The adventure took us through a glorious... What was it? Uh, how did we get there? We went Orpington. Bromley, it was a long so way around, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, was considering weird, like right? as the crow flies, it's probably only 20, 30 minutes. miles from where we live. Yep. Um, it yeah. It was what, a two and a half hour train journey? Yeah. Oh, was... I think because we Crazy. all went to have a little couple of drinkers, it's like, all right, then <laughs> no one really wants to drive. Yeah. Uh, some wants to drink more than others. Um, and <laughs> maybe <laughs> Who would that be? That may be me. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we ended up uh, getting the train there and we. Oh god, the drain journey there was hilarious, wasn't it? Um, what was it the boundaries to dating or boundaries? In oh dating? yeah, the, I oh. forgot about our little friend there. Yeah, yeah. Do we, do we, yeah, should, do we get a couple of image, image of these images tweeted out, or could that be dangerous? I don't know. Or? I'm sure I don't think it could be I, dangerous. I, kind of, yeah. I'm sure Ed, Ed made friends with a, a certain young man that was sitting opposite him on the train reading a, a bit of a strange book. Um, yeah, yeah. Called the boundaries of dating, and then he proceeded to fall asleep. And Ed was taking pictures of him while he was trying to catch flies with his mouth open. So, you know it. And um, it was more weird that I think he was with his girlfriend at the time. Of course, I nearly announced the whole thing to the rest of the train. You did. That was a uh, yeah. Uh, we we were WhatsApp each other during the week, and uh, Fraser WhatsApped literally uh, the Chinese guy between Lou and Ed um, is is reading of I won't say what your description of the book was but the book was called uh, The Boundaries of Dating and I started to read it out and I got as far as the word Chinese and then I cottoned on oh maybe I shouldn't be reading this <laughs> did out loud. Did you or did your missus because I swear it was your missus who said da, 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 don't. Yeah because no, she no, no, grabbed no. your tongue as you were saying it so I was like no, stop the, it Lewis. No the penny dropped don't worry <laughs> I realised because Ed had, tw- Ed had put a message with all these weird uh, symbols and stuff, and I thought it was a comment about that. I thought like Ed had done some weird kind of storyline of symbols within the message that he sent us, and, <laughs> no, and then as I, as I was reading that. it, that was uh... as I was reading it, I got what you meant, and uh, yeah, just about managed to save myself embarrassment. <laughs> but what goes into a book? The boundaries of dating. Well, this I is it, know. you know. Yeah, because it looked like a bit of a girly book, didn't it? Because it had like lipstick on the front cover, and but he seems to be quite into it. So he was you know. very into it, though he did fall asleep. But he I did. think it's probably because he was just, you know, trying to take it all in. Did does he want to know like the upper limits of what you can get away with? That's what concerned me. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, yeah. Is he, yeah, how is how he maybe trying to like push it. things a bit too far, and then someone said, "Oh, hang on a second, like no, you're going a bit too far there." Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and they have to kind of push him back a little bit. But you know, rule, rule number one: don't murder them. Yeah, don't don't it's, egg them. It's always good. Uh, and yeah, hey, maybe maybe don't, don't murder that. them and don't egg them. I love that. Yeah. that, that put those two. You know, <laughs> there are others. And but, egging. You know, be on, uh, you know it's, it's a family show. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like a court appointed book as well. Like maybe the, the courts have kind of said to him, "You have to read this because <laughs> yeah. of your past behaviour." If you read this, you've got a then you're not going to go yeah. to jail. You have got a questionnaire yeah. and a survey and a quiz at the end. Uh, 
people watching is always good fun though isn't it you always uh always see things that are a little bit different no definitely and uh, draw your own conclusions inevitably as well <laughs> so yeah Beautiful people and then obviously yeah. we had the uh well, i'm sure i could say the racist um ticket man we did, yeah. He Which was a was, bit of a filthy he, racist. That he man. was very weird, wasn't he? Yeah, it was like, yeah. And and it was like selling. Yeah, isn't a bad place, but he seemed to want to make out that it was predominantly just filled Remake, with yeah, yeah he, he, or fruit something. pickers was his exact word. Fruit yeah, pickers, he kind of yeah. yeah he threw a big question. He's like, well, English people going to selling? Why are English people going to selling? It's just full of Romanian fruit pickers. And he's like, like, all right, calm down. Yeah. It's like we can go yeah. here, and it's, it's fine. Yeah. And then, but I loved it with Fraser. It was like, "Ha <laughs> you crazy racist!" <laughs> and it was just like, "Yeah, what can he say to that?" But yeah, he was yeah a bit but of a strange fella. He was about six foot ten, so I wasn't about to argue with him. <laughs> he was a big old guy. But yeah, no, it was, a good, it was a good day apart from the, well, even with the eventful train journey, it was, it was good fun, wasn't it? Because we got to, to Mickey's house and for, for listeners, they've probably un- or heard Michael talking about his new house. He's, he's bought a new house out in the countryside um, and he's a bit of work doing to it, but it's a beautiful, beautiful yeah, little lovely. place. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, we were like basically hacksaws in hand, taking down hedges and pulling out nettles and he, yeah, him and his, his wife and his, well, not his child because his child wasn't there and his mum and dad were yeah kindly feeding us so we had a, a good feed and a good amount of booze and absolutely booze, I, I, yeah. did, I did see mickey you know gracefully late leave you know whenever he started off something with us you know doing stuff yeah he, just, he disappeared he just, inside yeah, yeah. going to put his feet up for a little I was bit thinking, bless him he deserves it but i thought that's, that's a very clever thing to do absolutely yeah um Struck but no it was good yeah we had, we had a fire going and a barbecue all good fun yeah no, all and you were fun. you were hacking away at those hedges as if with intent, Fraser, as oh, if that you was were angry. Fun. Yeah, someone. I was a, a man possessed. <laughs> <Getting> some aggression <laughs> out very, there. Very therapeutic. So, yeah, had a, had a good old time with that. Do you recommend yeah. any time you know you want to get some anger out, go find your local bush that you want yeah. to... Or even just go and find Mickey because he's got loads of work doing on the house. Mm. So if anyone wants to go and cut trees down for I'm him, sure, <laughs> I'm sure yeah. he'll provide you with food, you know, with all the requirements. You just bring, you know, the aggression. So what's been occurring with your week, Ed? What have you been up to? What have I been up to this week? I have been doing Swift stuff still. Still on the Swift train, um, doing all that. And I love Swift. I love iOS development. Um, but at the same time, I kind of don't because Xcode is buggy. Now, I don't know whether that's... that's yeah, I, I, see, I think because Swift is still so new. And like they, the one thing, like one of the rules, like uh, there's this... I can't remember what it's called. S, I think it's like sub... It's not subversion, that's the thing. But that's, it's like yeah. subtle version or something, like this versioning thing where you have like a uh, dot release. So you have like, you know, a major release will break, or, uh, is not backwards compatible. A minor release, yeah, major release, a minor release is backwards compatible but may change things. And then just a patch of the last one a dot, um, is just a patch for that one release. A lot of projects now in Git, uh, like in GitHub and everything, they they do this because it's very good that people can then see. Okay, if it's a major release, I can't. You know, this is going to make break my code. If it's a sub- minor release, it may break my. It shouldn't break my code. And if it's a patch, it definitely shouldn't. Um, the issue is, is that with Swift, like in a dot release and in a ma- minor release, they've broken a lot of things. So 1.0 came out with Xcode 6 and the whole shebang when iPhone 6 came out. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is great. And then eventually, like, probably two months later now, they've released 1.1, which breaks a couple of things. And, yeah, kind of crazy. And and, and it really is a young language. I mean, going Swift is good because it's so much nicer than Objective-C, but... It certainly is there's growing pains. Um, and like a lot of things like refactoring tools in Xcode don't work with Swift, which is a bit brutal. Um, and obviously all the examples and stuff uh, are, are with uh, Xcode. Not yeah. Xcode, or with Objective-C, sorry. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys have looked at Objective-C before. It's a tasty language. It's very small to looking and it looks weird. That why it looks, And it's very much like message passing forefront, which is cool. But also there's bits and bobs where you're just like the way it does anonymous functions is looking funky. And yeah, so I know there's still there actually is quite a, um, a backlash over Swift from diehard Objective-C people because they're like just thinking, oh, why couldn't we just do, you know, Objective-C and Objective-C could have, you know, just update Objective-C instead of having to make a whole brand new language called That's Swift. That's right, because you, you, kind of, you can kind of understand where they're, well, not where they come from because it's, it's not a reasonable point of view but you can kind of see why they're reacting in that way because obviously this thing they've trained for years to to kind of become proficient at and to get really good at all of a sudden they're a bit kind of scared oh hang on my skills now going to be obsolete because there's this new thing so am i now going to have to down tools 
and then start again whereas now I may be a master at doing this, am I now going to have to down tools and kind of learn the, the new thing to, to become a master again? Absolutely. I mean, and, and but then this is what is in our trade, though, isn't it? I mean, we have this with, like, ASP, you know, yeah. Classic ASP, with PHP, come at, you know, and, and all these languages that come out and everything. And I think the, the pros of Swift are it makes development a lot quicker, um, but also, yeah, it is still such a, a such a, you know, a baby language well not baby language but very immature language that people are still trying to find the ropes and what they actually want to do with it yeah and, and i think the language itself is still trying to find out where it wants to go but building stuff for ios is awesome uh, another thing actually with ios is um you know all the screen sizes and everything now mm-hmm. so we've kind of gone the android way where we have got quite a few screen sizes one of the beautiful things when the iPhone came out, original the original iPhone came out, was it was just this boom. This is one device. You develop for that one device, you're done. Yeah. Um, I think it's like three twenty by two eighty or something. Awesome. But now, obviously, we have these expanding devices where we have all of the iPhone range, all of the iPad range, um, and they're all very they're varying resolutions and varying sizes. So we are, the idea is to build really responsive. It's kind of taken a lot from the responsive web stuff where you're building responsive designs using uh, like auto layout in in ios development xcode um, development which is awesome but it's very confusing like the math behind it that you have to think of you have to think of how it scales and you're not you never you're not a lot of um what they used to do with these when these new devices came out was they would just say okay if it's this device it looks like this if it's this device it looks like this um that's a lot easier to get your head around and i think for your designers to to get the head around to design for than what we do now really where it's like well these are like almost um how do you say these are like uh behavior on the objects inside of the actual design and this is how they should you know kind of move and how they should react if the tra- you know screen changes size and everything so mm-hmm. it provides more of a, a flexible design but also a lot more confusing to actually code up and test um but we noticed that mickey is now online hello mickey hello how are we we're good so yeah. how what was the little catastrophe is uh time you've been uh, sick or is he is he okay <laughs> no he um we think he's like no oh, okay. oh, wow <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally just yesterday, actually. Because um, when we went to pick him up from uh, Abby's mum and dad. He had a full uh, set of teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> full set of ashes. He just took it into some steak. Um, no, he... Uh, yeah, apparently he was a bit of a hellraiser yesterday, so... Uh, oh, no. All yeah, that time, but, uh, it, like, it's not with you. Not around you, but then for... No, you know, exactly. It's... Yeah, yeah. But literally just... Uh, literally just the last 20 minutes, about to come onto the podcast, just started screaming. And uh, I could have left him with Abby, but... Uh, it really does make your brain shake when uh, when he's in full flow. So Imagine. just had to, uh, <laughs> yeah, just help out with that. So uh, apologies for uh, my late entry into the. Uh, That's podcast. okay, man. That's okay. We, we haven't maybe really. Like a, sorry, but yeah, maybe it's like a balancing of the karma where you've had it so good up until now. <laughs> yeah, you get like eight hours <laughs> sleep every day. Yeah, you're now going to have like a six weeks of absolute hell to kind of balance things out a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking that could happen at some point, but um, <laughs> <laughs> he seems all right now anyway. So, uh, but yeah, I was just listening to your uh, little convo on Swift. So, uh, yeah, it sounded quite interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. is it you two have both been playing with Swift? Is that right, or is it just Ed at the moment? Just Ed, uh, yeah, I've, I've not touched right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're saying it's basically it's quite in its infancy. It's definitely in its infancy, and like they haven't got a whole dependency manager set up like Coca Pods or like we use Composer. Objective yeah, C yeah. uses Coca Pods, and they haven't got that at the moment. So the way that you go, you know, bring in packages and stuff. There are there are workarounds to for Objective C packages to then use them in Swift, okay. um, which yeah. is good. But it, it isn't as fluid as using just Coca Pods for Objective C. Um, yeah. And a lot of projects at the moment, uh, one in, in particular, Alamo File, which is like a HTTP client, you know, abstraction layer. Um, okay. That just says just use us as a sub module and get which no one likes to use in sub-modules and Git. They're confusing, <laughs> and they ruin everything, but you have to do it that way, and you use the old-school way of pretty much copying and pasting code. Another one was, like, in the project that we use, um, we use, like, a promise library. Uh, promises are, like, I- I'm sure you uh, in, like, the J... Because jQuery are quite... Yeah. But they do it wrong. The jQuery, I love it, because I was well, actually listening to a couple of uh, videos, and they're like, oh, yeah, jQuery do it, but they do it completely against the standard of what should be, you know, a promise. 
um, yeah. which is quite funny. But promises are quite cool. Where they they kind of I don't know, if, uh, uh, Lou and Fraser, have you played around with promises at all? Yes, uh, I'm trying to think. I was using it with um, I was having some problems with jQuery Load, I think, and it got me out of jail with that. I've no idea why. It just it was one of those things where I found a Stack Overflow article that said try this promise function in it, and I did, and it worked. Boom. Mm. Um, so I, w- I was getting um, like rather than the actual div that I wanted to load in, it would kept loading in the whole page. Oh. And uh, it was it was weird because I've used loads load loads of times and I've never had any issues with it before. But it was doing it on this occasion, and it was uh, it was for my company site actually, which is uh, so you definitely very, very sure heavily. that yeah that is uh well, yeah I mean, it's well, it's very Ajax based. So yeah, it was on there. But promises are pretty cool because what they do is they kind of um, where we get into this this chain of callback hell, you know, like in JavaScript and jQuery in particular, where we have do this, then do this, then do this, do this. And you'll find that you're just nesting all these callbacks. Yeah. <laughs> what they do is yeah. the, the with uh, promises is a very simple idea. It's all it does is it's a structure where it allows you to flatten out these things, you know, into promises. So I promise that once you've done that, then do this. And, you know, and, and it really does do exactly the same thing, but it does. Do you know it something? In- I just realized, I, I said it was the wrong function. It was on jQuery Animate that I used it. It wasn't yeah, that, on load at all. That, Sorry. That, yeah, no, no, it was Animate. That's what you would want. To, yeah, because, you know, it, the idea is you want to call something once something's done or if it's yeah, failed, yeah. you want to handle the failure in a certain way and, and promises because a lot of, you know, like in nodes, it's particular that it's quite common that, you know, error will be passed the first parameter in the callback and on, you know, in a function and then the actual result if you've done it if it's done successfully. Um, but with like promises, what you do is then, you know, you provide it in the standard way in async code to make it more manageable. Um, and of course with Swift, it's got anonymous functions and everything, which is great. So we've been using promises uh, for authentication and with like IOAuth and stuff to be able to provide that. Uh, that's another thing, OAuth. OAuth authentication. I don't know if you've uh, any of you have had to play around with that. Um, that is a unique thing. I mean, you get we, we're doing the, the not the simplest, but OAuth two, like the the basic one you can do. But some of the stuff you can do with OAuth is crazy um, for like security, like just you know setting up security, logging on, authentication side of things. But I'll leave that because yeah, it gets really boring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. But yeah, that's it, really. I mean, that's my week being really. It's just, it's been a lot of Swift stuff. Uh, seeing you, look, you guys yesterday, and uh, on this lovely pod this afternoon. Awesome. And Lewis, how about you? Have you had a, a good working week? I'm trying to think what happened last week. It's uh, all the weeks are a bit of a blur at the moment, but it it was it was a quieter week. Certainly, I've uh, the the site that I talked about with my client last week has still not progressed anywhere. Ooh. And you're my, still waiting um, on the client to to provide. Well, yeah, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just it's not been tested enough for them to to clarify that I've made them exactly what they need. So, yeah. you know, I've um, I've slogged too many hours into it to just launch it on a whim, and I, I don't need the sleepless nights worrying about yeah. it. To be honest, I want I want it. I want everyone to be fully uh, fully au fait with how the whole thing works, and uh, you know, once once it's up and running, so that everyone knows what the deal is with it, and then. You know, rather than just launching it, because they keep saying, "Oh, we just want it to get launched," but it can't go live because they haven't put all their content in it yet, for one yeah. thing. But this is this is something that happens with uh, with a lot of projects, I found. And uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. I'm hoping that well, my boss has effectively pulled me off that project now because I've got two or three other things that I've right. started uh, started working on. So I don't know what we're going to end up doing with launch dates and stuff now. So it remains to be seen. But it it was disappointing because. Yeah, it's been basically my my whole last two three months work is was to get towards that deadline, and I and I did get there. It was them that didn't. Right. So, but yeah, I mean, we went over it last week, I suppose. But yeah, yeah. Well, you, I guess the the main thing is your hands are clean, and you've done your end of the bargain, and yeah. So yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, other than that, yeah, I've got. Um, I managed. To, I, I was given another site to build week before last. That's that's built now essentially. So that's another one where we're now waiting on content. I think my. I think my content, boss is having Daniel a meeting with content. them. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I can get the sites built, but I, I just can't seem to get them launched. That's yeah. the issue. That's the and are these all, all on your framework, or are they WordPress sites? Or no, what? Pun? <laughs> <laughs> WordPress, no, no, definitely not that. No, no, they are in my own framework actually. Yep. Yeah. So, awesome. um, well, yeah. The thing is, I've got so many components built now that it doesn't take me long to 
to kind of get stuff launched with it. Like yeah. all the, a lot of the hard work's already kind of been done, so I just pull in stuff from the start that That's I've cool. already made, and it makes it quick. We were talking about that with you yesterday. Some of your fr- your freelance stuff, you've got components and things built that you use as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff because I use Silver Stripe anyway, so a lot of it is kind of pre-made components. So you can just kind of yeah, pull in a, a, a new component and bang, you've got a blog and it's really exactly. simple. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. So, you... um... oh, sorry, I was sorry, sorry, go... you know, like with, with these, like the because the dream is just this idea that you can say, oh, I want that, that, and that, and yeah. then it just does it. How do you find it editing? Have you ever have you done much like having to tweak the things? Like yes, yeah. It's, it's the, the way enough. Silverstrike works is really cool because you can just extend. It. Say for instance, you've got the the stock blog module, and if there's any functionality you want to modify or if you want to add to it, you can basically extend the extend the class. So you, you're not actually changing anything in the core. So you can still update the core, and you can if you want to if you put a function that's already within the class into your, if you basically copy that out, if you want to make changes to a certain function, um, it will recognize that you're modifying this function. So it'll ignore the function in the native blog and run off the one that you just oh, extended, cool. which is really cool. Cause then when, when obviously people are updating all the modules and stuff, like when the open source community is doing it, you can just pull in the new stuff and assuming there's no major changes, then you, you're fairly safe, safe to run on the yeah. same stuff. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's awesome. really cool. Yeah. Really, really good. That's how I've tried to set my framework up. I try to have as much there by default as possible. Yeah. But obviously, inevitably, you need to you need to extend it for whatever your current project is. Yeah. It's uh, it's helpful to have to have that there, and then you know just do what you need to do on top of it. Yeah. Definitely helps. So yeah. So um, my, my, I've also started another site now, which I'm, I'm literally only building the homepage at the moment. But this is uh, this is my first dabble at making a responsive site. Oh, so cool. uh, how, what, what design? What designs do you have? Like from the designer, is it fixed layout? <laughs> yeah, or... yeah, you probably just have the fixed layout, yeah. and then you have to go from there off your own back, make it sort of look similar. I don't, I don't have um, the responsive version yet in terms of like the iPad and iPod, for, iPod version. Did they do that? I'd have that didn't mean iPod, iPod. I meant iPhone. <laughs> iPod version. That would be essentially pointless, wouldn't it? No, um, I don't, I don't have those yet. But what I am, I've been messing around with, like um, going out beyond the old 960 grid, and messing around yeah. with that, and scaling and zooming and various bits. And yeah, it's only the second time I've done it, and I, I've, I'd say I've got modest experience with media queries. I'm not fully. Uh, I'm probably not utilising them the best way possible at the moment, but I found an interesting, interesting thing today, which I might have a look at for it. Which yep. uh, it's called Jeet.js. Jeet, as in uh, J-W-E-T. Yeah, J-W-E-T.js, Because I'm on uh, Touch Plus, and there's uh, there's a tutorial series that on on this, and it's all about um, this guy that's made this responsive grid design. Right. I was talking to you about it yesterday, Fraser, because you you're um, you like all the front end stuff. Oh, I do. I didn't. I didn't know like whether there's actually been any like nice proper like tools been put in place to help with responsive coding or not. And rather than just literally manually putting in the media queries and everything, I just didn't know whether there were any tools there at all. But this might be one. I haven't looked into it a massive amount, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't class it as one of our uh, fine plugin reviews that we do on this show yet. Yeah. But <laughs> I might. I might have some more information on it this week because I'm going to use it. So I'll. Uh, so that'd be good to hear. I'll about certainly that. let you guys know. Yeah, and on the terms of responsive kind of layouts and stuff, how do you like getting design, uh, getting the stuff from the designer? Like, because obviously, there's you can't really just kind of rely on having an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, exactly the same as you, Lewis. But like, because you can't rely on. Okay, this is how it needs to look in in an iPhone. This is how it needs to look in an iPad. Because you've got everything in between as well, haven't you? So, kind of like from a personal standpoint, I am more than happy just to get the desktop layout and then kind of improvise and kind of yeah, work it my own way in do, terms like of what you can yeah do what you can do because do. yeah because it's kind of hard without the des- because without the designer knowing what is possible to the to the team being like a, a a front-end dev themselves essentially like they they inevitably don't know what's possible and stuff and i think quite often you can get if if i get a design from a designer where i've got a desktop version and an ipad version and a an iphone version say Ignore all the Android devices and all the other sizes of, of the iOS devices. It's, it can be quite painful sometimes because they've, they've positioned stuff. They say, okay, well, on the desktop version, I want the phone number to be up here, but on the iPad mm. version, I want it to be down here. And it's kind of stuff that sometimes isn't, Possibly. isn't doable the, the with pure, well, with yeah, pure so CSS. Yeah. yeah. The, um, the first, the first time I did it, um, this, uh, where's the, I'll paste the link in. The, the, well, the site's called solarisinstallations.com. Okay. And that's my first, the first ever, um, where's our chat window? Uh, that's the, my first ever kind of dabble with it. 
hold on. Ask. Is it .co.uk? Uh, doc. Yeah. Oh no, that's the G link. <laughs> it's the oh, it, it's the markup, isn't it? Because it's like almost that they do want to pretend like it's two different sites. Like you have a mobile version and then you have a full site, but really yep. the beauty of responsive is that you're just it's, responding it's to the yeah. current pl- design, the yeah. current yeah. real estate. Yeah. Not it's, snipping yeah, between this, the two. This particular one that I pasted to you was just about it kind of messes around with the scaling beyond the nine sixty grid. It doesn't actually do anything down within it. So this is my first well, first proper one in terms of actually like looking at iPad and iPhone and yeah. stuff. So I'm getting designs for that in due course, but meanwhile I'm messing around with it and yeah. It's it's trying to get into the mindset of um, using all the CSS to, to percentages rather than pixels. That's right, yeah, yeah. And like, as a general, what I tend to do, I'll, I'll build it to a a full desktop width or whatever on, is on the on the design so that you get even by the designer, and then just kind of reduce the window. And then when you get to a certain point, you know you have to work exclusively in percentages. And then where well, you've got grids with yeah. with three elements, then obviously you're thirty three percent those. And then when it starts looking a little bit too squashed, you say, okay, well at this at this point in time if this is like 800 pixels or 700 pixels then these things go from being 33 percent wide to being 50 percent wide so you only get two next to each other mm-hmm. and then when you go down even further okay well i've got to be 100 percent wide and it's kind of that's that's generally how i work it and i'll and if there's stuff that won't work on on mobiles and won't work on desktops that's not not kind of what's the word i'm looking for not important to to the site content so it's not actual main content and it's not main functionality like if it's kind of like a Oh, why don't you click here and come and see our Twitter f- f- Twitter feed and stuff like that? If something like that won't fit into the design, rather and, unless it's specifically an important thing they want to keep in there, I'll just stick a class on their mobile hide, and then yeah, yeah when it comes down it. to yeah. yeah, when it comes down to four eighty, oh. then it, hit, it kicks into that mobile hide class, and, and it's is, gone. This is the weird yeah. thing because I don't know if you guys saw. I follow uh, the Guardian Tech team on Twitter, and they're pretty cool because they use like Scala and stuff, and they're quite yeah. into producing good content they've right. just open sourced the the guardian website as well haven't they have they really i say open source they put it up on github yeah oh wow that's pretty wow. cool um but like is it a they're... php site <laughs> no, no it's, it's not it's Scarlet, Scarlet, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's... yeah so, so i don't um, understand any of it that's a holiday uh, holiday resort in greece that i went to <laughs> <laughs> so they, they sounds nicer Kefalo- than the language Kefalonia. so that so they they they, they shipped on their Amer- i think it's got the guardian american website like a responsive design now Yep. And um, they looked at and they showed us all these graphs and everything. Like they posted them on Twitter showing uh, like a, a, like pretty much half of the web load res- uh, resource usage. So they were able to like half the amount going down the pipe to each person, each request. Yep. Um, and I was kind of shocked because I was thinking, hang on a minute. Surely with responsive, because you're, doing, you're, you're chucking everything at the device, yep. that it would be more. You know, like, like you were saying, like display none. Well, actually, you're still chucking down all that stuff. I mean, it's very yep. strange. So I think one of the things that um, they do is they use a, a cool technique, responsive image technique, where they're able to work out what image resource to actually download based on yep. they know what device you're on. So they know, okay, if you're on this device and you're this width, I'm going to send you this version of the image. And they probably have like four different, you know, compression rates of different images yep. and maybe have different types. Like, cause like a WebM, you know, oh, you're using Google Chrome. Cool. I can give you the WebM version, which is a lot quicker. So that's kind of how I feel that they may have done it. But it's really strange to think that actually responsive design can actually lower the page load size as well as, you know, so you get the best of both worlds. You get the responsive yep. design and lower page loads. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys use a front-end CSS framework, like, as standard? I mean, obviously, we all use bits and bobs of Twitter Bootstrap. I think it's time, just I Bootstrap. I never use Bootstrap. Yeah, use I use all this Bootstrap. No, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll start a new site with HTML5 uh, boilerplate, and that obviously picks in, um, like, is, oh, I can't even remember what it is because it's just straight out of HTML5 boilerplate, but it's like the resets and the... Yeah. And the, the, what's the do, do you use the normalizer on it and stuff? Do you use yeah. the, the normalized um, CSS resource? Normalize. Do you use um, like Eric Mayer's? Because there's a whole two yeah. camps, isn't there? Of do you do you reset the thing or do you um, just normalize it and just not nuke the whole page? I think um, HTML5 Foil Player. I believe it normalizes it either resets and then normalizes or normalizes and then resets. Whichever is yeah, I guess it would be normalized and reset. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think it does that. But yeah, to be honest, I don't know which specific one it uses. I just kind of, yeah. I think it uses normalized by default because I always seem to be like, oh, I don't know. I normally just want to do a reset, but that's just, yeah. I think, preference there, isn't it? Like, Yeah, I, I just I just use a reset. I've just just literally stick that Eric Meyer reset thing in, the, in front of all my style sheets. Yeah. And I, I very rarely have to do that much debugging for browsers now. Yeah. So that seems to kind of take care of it all yeah. for me. 
but I, I, I reckon I probably use positioning too much in my CS. I'm, I'm no CSS genius by any stretch. <laughs> it's something I wish I was a lot better at because it's, it's, a, it's cool. I like CSS. You know, mm. there's, uh, there's a lot of tools out there, but it, there's also that thing. Obviously, I, I, I'd love to use this new thing that's out, but I don't want to have to like do it twice for another browser. Yes. So I'd rather just use something that I know is going to work at the moment for everything. It's just because it's quicker and easier, and yeah. you know we're all on deadlines and stuff. We've all got to get a get a thing out, you know. So how are you, Mick? You, you, you uh... well, basically, as soon as you said the responsive word, I had a massive anxiety attack and just blacked out for like <laughs> fifteen minutes. So I, oh man, I hate responsive. I, I don't, no, don't. It's a buzzword right. now, though, isn't it? Can't get away from it. It's, mm. it's yeah. buzzword. Like and clients are learning and, it as well. Yeah. yeah. Like, clients are learning it and that's the biggest danger yes but, it is uh, yeah and they don't understand it yeah I, I've not done a responsive site for uh, for a long time well actually I, I inherited a site where I had to do some work on it it was a responsive site but thankfully all the styling was done but I kind of think if I did do one now and, and I'm not really clued up but I'd like to think that there's a lot better tools out there and not just in terms of like a, um, the grid but in terms of like what everybody's talking about in terms of like what content to deliver as well and I mean, because, like you say, the way, like, when I first started doing it was, like, just deliver the images for large, medium, small, whatever, and obviously all the other different sizes, but now I'd like to think there's nice tools out there that do the styling for you that that determine the content to deliver, all that kind of stuff. Something in one big package would be fantastic. What was but, that that Gumby framework that you always used to use? I remember that seeing was, that was some pretty, of your code. Was, yeah. Sorry? <laughs> that was one of the first ones I found, really, and... Uh, did you you use that for grids and stuff, or just for like general? Yeah, just just like that grid and those percentages. I just you know had that whole kind of like one column, two columns, and and that worked pretty well. But it was like all the other stuff that was in there that you didn't have to strip out, which I didn't want. So um, I don't know what I would use now, in all honesty. But there's so many things out there. Um, but I'd have to. I would probably if I was going to do a responsive site now, I'd probably spend a good two three hours just researching the tools that are out there because you kind of think there's. It's no longer really in its infancy. There's people that have been responsive for years. There's probably people out there who've spent a couple of years building a good uh, building block there for you, I guess. I hope. Yeah, I don't know. With, I hate with, it. I, I with just, the exception of like the panels and stuff on, on Twitter Bootstrap, I'm still writing all my CSS from from scratch, and I'm, I'm convinced yeah. I don't need to be doing that. Yeah, well, that's it. I it's mean, a, it's a matter of finding time. the tool, like you say. It's a matter of finding yeah. something that... that Kind of yeah, does it the is. Job and... and actually, sometimes the best tool isn't the one that appears first on Google search no, results. Sometimes not. there's mm-hmm. much better stuff out there. It's just finding it, isn't it? And I guess that is where the beauty of reading things like Net, uh, .NET Magazine, a web designer mag, if you read those regularly, then you get more exposure to those things, don't you, rather than just what you find on Google. But yeah, that I just hate that topic. But I kind of think that is why you have professional front-end developers who yeah. just... Specialized. That. They're they're called um, the what are they the uh, unicorns. Like UX guys, I guess. They're oh, the unicorns. unicorns because they're like hidden. You know, they're so out of sight because they can design yeah. and code. It's like yeah. whoa, they're like the you know the unicorns. Yeah. They've got two I, brain I, types tied up into one. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's super crazy. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd yeah. hate to be to, to label myself as one or the other though. I I like the whole the whole lot i'd like i don't really? like i i like being I'd, just a de- devi- uh, designer not designer a developer designer <laughs> i'm a designer guys i'm a designer yeah i just i just love logic kind of stuff that yeah. that stuff really interests me and, and doing it in the best way or, yeah. or the quickest way that that's what really uh gets me off to be honest yeah you know hacking off. hacking code <laughs> yeah. you're a hacker you're a code monkey you love the code <laughs> monkeying um, i got yeah. a, a random question to throw your your guys way though yeah, fancy. Well, obviously, as you know, I've just had the week off. Yes, kind of. Um, week yeah, you say work. you say off, but you've really just been working on the house. So define that as a <laughs> holiday. Yeah, this is going to be. I've had a week of work, and my skills now obsolete. <laughs> yeah, and, they, and we're like, yes, they are now. Sir. <laughs> what, uh, what is you... PHP? <laughs> it's PHP seven out. Um, no, uh, do you guys check your work emails? No, if you're on holiday. No. no. Never. Never. It's so no, because I don't actually to. know my password to my email because I've got it saved on my machine uh, at work. Very and it's not yeah. a conscious thing. It's just because, no, yeah, that's I, I very don't know clever, what it is. I, yeah, um, yeah. How about but, you then, Mickey? Do you? Uh, not usually, but I did this week just because like, we had this big like release like, before we went on holiday. And I kind of I, I feel like, responsible for like if it 
yeah. it succeeds or not. Do you know what I mean? It's like we, we had to kind of push it at that time. And, and it's like, well, it could have a massive bad impact if it if it's not it working. Work. Oh, dear. And the other what thing was is it like, that was being launched? Uh, it was just like a, the latest sort of fl- uh, version of our CMS, but obviously right. it feeds so many websites and right. stuff. But um, I just, you know, I know I'm going to come back to hundreds of emails. So I kind of thought, well, if I can just check a few of them now and just delete some of them. And, and then by the end of, by about Wednesday, I think I had about 50. And that was like after getting rid of all the rubbish. And I was like, you know what, just leave it. Yeah, but, just, oh, emails just keep it's growing, it's growing, a vicious growing. circle. Because if you yeah. respond, then that person then is going to expect another response from you. So, well, it just got no, me you're thinking. Because, to a holiday. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it kind of got me thinking. Like, you know, like Ed had this like great idea where we we're going to get our respective other halves on the show to, to say what it's like being with developers <laughs> and stuff. And and it just made me think that, you'd, but even like for some of us who can work from home, we think people think, oh, you're so lucky you work from home. Well, actually, it's. Could be really bad because then you you can constantly do your work if you want it, to, exactly. and that almost yeah. becomes the expectation. And uh, finding the boundaries is is almost impossible. I found yeah. if you work from home, yeah, yeah, that is no. I'm interested to see what you guys feel. You feel surprisingly yeah. isolated as well. I, I had a two or three week period not that long ago where I would work from home three or four days out of the week, and I thought it was going to be more amazing than it was. I thought, oh, this is brilliant, but it's it is. You're right, absolutely right. You find like. Well, if I was actually yeah. at work, I'd have gone home an hour and a half ago, and I'm still yeah. doing this stuff and yeah. things like that. And, and I really I, enjoy the process and the kind of the the formality that it, it it kind of gives you to actually get yourself out of bed and to get yourself showered and to get yourself into the car and to <laughs> drive to the office and and kind of because yeah. I I could see myself very easily becoming a hermit and yeah, well, yeah that's never leaving the house. Thursday like, evening, I realised I hadn't been out the house since Monday evening. Yeah, was, oh, that's, that's not weird. Not. Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> yeah. That's not but good. I'd, I'd had no real reason to. And when I'm at work, I, you know, I do things like on my lunch break, I go out and walk for an hour and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah so you realise the difference in just like kind of yeah. how you feel generally, physically, and everything else. And yeah, I think definitely. Like my next employer, I'm just going to tell you, I, I don't have a computer at home. I don't use computers. I've got an abacus and a notebook, and yeah. that's it. <laughs> and I, and yeah. I've got no electricity at home, so I yes. can't power anything. Yeah. I'm really yeah. sorry. Yeah. Well, you've got an excuse, like in your new place. Internet. Yeah, in your new place anyway, because you're not going to get the best internet well, where, you, where you're moving you're to. So you're not going to get any internet. I've got the well, absolute best <laughs> excuse ever. Yeah, uh, that's, that's that's half the reason why you moved there, isn't it, Mickey? Yeah, absolutely. I should point out. Actually, there's never any expectation on me to do stuff outside of. Well, hours, you, you put it on yourself, it's just don't me, you? Really. It's you. Put Definitely. It on yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think, think yeah. developers are very responsible people, aren't they? They always well, they feel care, that pressure. I think, I think a good developer cares. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, because they want to produce good stuff, and they don't want to, you know, what they. I think you know what you want to do is at least produce something that you feel proud of. Yeah. Um, because we do spend a lot of time, a lot more out time outside of work as well, honing our craft, and then. So it would just be let's hack it out of the door, like it's you know just this conveyor belt. Kind of does hurt us, like it does make us feel mm. like a bit crappy. Um, if, if you're in a position as well where it's a live site and you know something's not right on it, you, you're not going to sleep, are you? Well, this is it. Yeah, exactly. It will nag on you for ages. So true. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess the kind of developers who can do that, they, they're not going to get jobs. Or well, if they do get well, jobs, well, they do. They're not I mean, this is the thing. different mindsets as well, isn't it? I think it's certain people care. Yeah. I think I, I think I find a lot more people. A lot of developers are of the nature similar to us where we care enough to want to do things, you know, and like, oh, I'll finish that at the weekend or, you know, I'd, I'll read that up at the weekend because I want to make sure, you know, I'm, I take, I'm, I'm knowing the latest and greatest and I want to do the greatest thing I can. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have, what I've found, actually, um, I put it in, in the uh, Skype chat and I put it in the show notes, is the picture element in HTML5. So it appears, yes. actually, that these remove the need to use like javascript and css hacks and allows you to supply like different using media queries different like image like actual different images yep and different you like, specify different source sets don't you for different yeah that's it yeah and and it's crazy and you can do it with different uh, like dpi so you can set like you know like the iphone 4 and the iphone 5 and the iphone 6 have different dpis and you can set like this is the two times images of the one times image yeah this is the three times image and it seems yeah it seems pretty amazing like what well, what's the browser support on that because it is ie 10 does that support it because i i know, I know some... that i know that well, it says that it is currently available in chrome 38 which shows you how quick Chrome versions yep. are going up. Um, but yeah, so wow. I don't think it's available in anything else. I don't know whether there may be like 
there may be um you know polyfills and stuff for different browsers but it is cool that this is the way it's going that this is what i love the demo <laughs> yeah of the, of the cat yeah <laughs> yeah oh dear, oh, dear. Yeah. but it, it's Easy, just please. it's just cool though like being able to you know really take advantage of it and yeah. yeah, but what it does show you though is that yeah, it, very much in its infancy, isn't it? And it is. Yeah, all this stuff is very much kind of like okay, well, when can we properly use it? Because even though we're getting these examples, it's cool to read a blog post about it. But then when you think actually, I'm the, I'm not legitimately only going to be able to use this probably in two or three years time. It does put you yeah. a downer on it. Yeah, like, I meant earlier. Yeah, I'm looking at can I use dot com for it, and it's yeah, i eleven eleven doesn't support it. Uh, five That's Fox. an awesome uh, website. Can can it's really cool. Com? Yeah, yeah, can yeah, I use dot com? And it's basically all the all the new elements and stuff. So yeah, Firefox, by the looks of things, has no plans to support it. Um, Opera's uh, latest version currently supports it. Chrome for Android currently supports it, and iOS for Safari doesn't. Um, Safari doesn't. Wow. And yeah, but have you? Oh, have you heard of the uh, next next week or midweek? So by the time people listen to this, it's probably already going to be out. But Mozilla are bringing out a, a browser aimed at developers. Really? Oh, really? Yes, they are. I don't. They've not kind of released exactly what what's going to be so special about it. But there was a, a video that that came out that they released, and it was basically like it was just like explosions and oh, the like with that horrible phrase that I think that we're going to change. On the front page it's of web. coming. It was yeah, but it was like the the browser built by developers for developers, God. which is the most stupid comment yeah. in the world because like who it's else is going to build? Yeah. <laughs> no, who else is going to build a browser anyway? Like if you got like oh, the tomorrow. marketing guys building a browser for developers, like it's, it's tomorrow that it's going to be. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, they've not Ooh. kind of re- said what's going to be so special about it at all. It's just kind of yeah, we've got this browser coming okay. out for developers, but I'm it's, I'm keen to check it out because I do. I do enjoy Firefox. Can, and can you literally make a website live as you're actually doing it without like refreshing, or you yeah, know, are you writing know. live I, code and not? That would be cool if it had live refresh on there somehow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and like, hopefully, it's not just going to be like a version of Firefox that comes pre-shipped with Firebug. Well, this um, is it. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. They could legit just go down that route of like, here is Firefox bundled with a couple of extensions. And <laughs> yeah. This is going to change your world. Yeah. But no, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what what that's actually going to entail. Anyway, so I'll be checking that. Is it you say it was tomorrow that it's coming out? Uh, yeah, on the tenth. It's the tenth anniversary of Firefox as well. Oh, oh that's quite interesting. Mm. Oh, this are you, are you, you guys still de- developing Firefox? Do you? Uh, I'm trying to switch over to Chrome, um, just because I do enjoy Fire Firefox, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I prefer the user experience on chrome and yeah. i'm just kind of i think the developer tools are a bit more powerful on chrome so i'm just trying to get a bit of okay. the big thing the that extensions I didn't, are good there's a lot yeah. of good extensions to the like one that. thing that i didn't like on chrome um in terms of development is like when you're on firefox and you can right click view image info and you get the dimensions of an image that was that is still missing from chrome but i'm kind of learning to live without that because you can just you can inspect an image and then you can mouse over and it'll give you the dimensions on there anyway but it was just a different way it's of looking funny at it. how those little things are, are the things that actually draw you back from changing like this yeah. tiny little feature will make it such a big thing to actually okay now i can change and i want you know because you use these in your day-to-day development life yeah yeah, and it's just kind of like trying to learn the new process or learning a different way of doing something, which is just as powerful and just as convenient, but it's just not what you used to at the <laughs> it's time. It's not so. what you used to. <laughs> yeah. That, um, no, I, that, I, think that I, I like Chrome because it, it, it supports the most stuff, I think. I don't know if that's definitely I accurate, think it does, but it's I think just, it's just very find much, it less stressful yeah, when developing because you just know that immediately something's going to work when you put it in there, and then, yeah, you might have to look at other things later on. Yeah. But you can you can mm. just kind of get on with it. And I guess Chrome another benefit kind of as well of developing in Chrome is the fact that the Chrome is the biggest browser out there now, isn't it? So if it's yeah. working well, in Chrome... I mean, then... what are the browser percentages? Let me have a look, like, latest percentages, because because we all use Chrome. And yeah. You're, you're mean, be, well, the worrying thing on there, I think, last time I checked, was how high IE8 still was. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Uh, that seems it's hard to get definitive stats as well, isn't it? Because I guess the only stats that, that you are available are to... The website who who is far, farming those stats because I guess there's no well, there's no central it, organization yeah. that knows definitively who's mm-hmm. using what and I guess it's just big big traffic websites so if you look at like msn.com obviously everyone's going to be using IE because nobody goes on msn.com apart from people that have got IE yeah. with the default <laughs> homepage that's exactly yeah I was going to yeah. say yeah, yeah. It's the ones do, who do you guys often. slap those banners on the IE8 browsers that are old the ones that say you should upgrade See, I, I leave the yeah in HTML5 boilerplate they've got like the standard like your browser's out of date click here to so I'll leave that in place um, oh it's there is it it is yeah um, I, I won't remove that but it, yeah 
Um, I, don't, I don't know if it does any good. Cause I, guess the... you, I, got, I got sent a screenshot the other day from a client and it had that in the bottom corner. And so they obviously didn't give a monkey's about <laughs> it. So, <laughs> yeah, you can um, only try. While, while Ed's looking for that, I did just find there's a polyfill for that picture thing. Yeah, Ooh. that's really, um, it looks really awesome. Picture fill. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it falls back to, like what the method of doing that is though i'm guessing on the fallback it is still loading all images and then just picking one or something mm -hmm. i don't know I, i'd have to have a look at it but uh yeah i'll here's, put it here's in, the thing that i was we're us. messing around with it the other day and um, i don't the answer's probably out there i didn't quite get to it yet but can you can you set a responsive height on a div uh, yes, uh, you can. Uh, oh, you with could, it, without oh. without obviously specify like with obviously if it's an image and you set it to a hundred percent as you as you resize the browser it goes with it. Is there a way of doing that with? Oh uh, no, but of... yeah, a way I'll kind of fake that. So you, you want to keep the the ratio. So when it gets smaller, it gets smaller in height as well. The div is that correct? So you say you've got like a a fixed. Either way. Yeah. So yeah, so when you compress the width of the thing, it does that as well to the image. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Did? Yeah, but with, um, with divs. Though yeah, I'll kind of fake that by just putting a transparent GIF in there of a fix of the ratio that you want it That's, to be. So if you've got like a three yeah. by two and you want it to kind of scale accordingly, then I'll I'll do it that way. But I'm not sure if there's a clean way of, of doing it. That. You could probably do it with JavaScript, but I I try and do as much as I can with CSS without having yeah. to use JavaScript. Yeah. I don't. I mean, again, I don't know if that's factual, but to me, it just seems the best practice. It's that just way. a cleaner way of doing it, and yeah, and it's yeah. it's using less resource and and and, and what have you anyway, and obviously the. The microscopic percentage of people that don't have JavaScript enabled <laughs> for some. Do those like, people exist? They do exist. Yeah, they exist. Yeah. yeah, they really crazy, yeah. crazy people. Before, before yeah. I, I, I knew that much about computers, I always thought that JavaScript was the reason that my browser broke. So <laughs> right. Maybe Damn there are people. JavaScript. It always just, we always used to get this pop up saying, "Oh, a JavaScript extension has stopped yeah. responding." Oh, right, yeah. like, what is this blooming JavaScript thing that keeps? Breaking, but and yeah. do you remember like back in in the earlier ID, IE days as well? If there was a JavaScript error, like that was it. Like you couldn't access yeah, the, the website. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was like, do you want to debug this error? So why would a user want to debug a JavaScript <laughs> error? Like, no, they they absolutely don't. And then you'd have to refresh the page and then try and press Escape to stop it before it loaded that bit. <laughs> oh. And uh, yeah, but luckily that those are no longer the days. Have you, have, you found, really... have you ever found a weird browser bug? I found a browser bug with um, Uploadify. I don't know if you ever use if you've ever used that. Oh, yeah. Just a, just a, yeah, you've used it where you'll use it and you'll upload something and then suddenly you'll get this big, I think it's like snappy or something like that. Your, your browser page has crashed and there's, oh, uh, the it's Chrome oh, beautiful. I love yeah. snappy. Yeah, good old Chrome and, snappy. Do you know what? Is it the is? oop? Like, yeah. It's just one thing of like the kind of the, the dark kind yeah. of blue background it, with the, yeah. the teeth it, thing. Do you know, yep. do you know what the, the fix is for it? What was no? that? You literally, you, you set, you use a set timeout for like a millionth of a second. Oh really? Like, and it does it. And it stops it from and going it, crazy. Stops I, did, from I found it. it. I found an article that said that, and it fixed it straight away. Really? Because I was getting so annoyed. I was like, every single time I I refreshed the page, it was crashing and going into this thing. We don't get that. Ridiculous. The engines have got quite good now, where we don't get it as much. But it is funny when. And another nice thing, actually, I suppose, is that tabs. One of the nice things Chrome did bring was tabs. Each tab is its own process. So if that dies, the whole browser doesn't die. Because we're so used to tabs yes. now, so yep. at least we can still use other tabs. Um, because that was the yeah. whole thing when tabs started becoming a big thing, where we'd have a load of tabs open and one page would be badly scripted or something, kill the browser, and all the tabs and would everything's go. Gone, yep. Yep. And you're like, yeah. no, because I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to get better at doing browse uh, like bookmarks, and I use Delicious still. I'm probably the only one who uses. Do Delicious you really? Still. I'm still use Delicious. I still no love way. it. Um, what is that? Uh, Delicious. So it's like a bookmark manager. Um, do you but, need one? Well, it's quite cool because I just put I put Adam all in there, and then I've got you know, I've been able, then I'm able to when I'm at work or when I'm on my Mac, uh, my MacBook, or when I'm on my iMac or whatever, um, I'm able to just go okay, yeah, you know, or when, when I'm on my phone, even it's just like oh, well, I remember that link. But then you can just sign into Chrome and, and you've got yeah, it there anyway. Yeah, yeah. is it even on Android? Well, I suppose because you can get Chrome on iOS as well, can, can't you? So you I'm can. sure I, I never actually did that. You know, I've, I've, I still use Safari. On, the, on that, which is a really mm. weird one because Safari on the uh, Mac, I've never bothered even trying to use. Yeah. And I don't even know why. It's, I mean, that's the bad thing. I think it's like a psychological thing where you just go to Chrome now. I just yeah. go for Chrome did, all did the time. Did you find those stats, Ed? 
Uh, I did, right, but it, everyone's going to hate me. It's the, the the stats are from the w3schools.com browser stats. Yeah, so that's going to be... Well, Every time we well, mention it's that, we get abuse from because someone. Because it's like September, 59% or 59.6% of users to the site were using Chrome. Yeah, that kind of Which makes is sense. Pretty, where where, op- where know, does Opera come out? I don't. Does anyone use Opera? Hello. No, I is don't that, see. I don't see the point. Is that, is that Mr. Man? That is. That is my dad. He's just looking around. Hi, Ed's Mr. dad. Mr. Man, I've got all your books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he couldn't hear that. I've got headphones That's on. A terrible but, joke. But yeah, uh, I don't see a point for for Opera existing. To be honest with you, because it's it doesn't. It's not. Like, let's, I'll tell you what. Let's Google that. Why does Opera? Exist. <laughs> because there are people out there that, that are, like that swear by it. like what well, the guy who's the iOS dev where I work like he won't use another browser he's like oh Opera's great and I'm like well what's the point like but like Chrome has got all the features and more and is quicker and it looks nicer so there's there's no reason that anyone on earth should ever be using Opera <laughs> like it's it's lovely that people are out there kind of want to be different this, this new yeah. browser and want to be different and it's I think it's awesome that that people are making it, but in my mind, there is not a single reason. And if any listeners no. out there would like to put me right, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'd like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be open minded. If you have, if you can I've give got, me a genuine reason uh, why anyone would want to use Opera, <laughs> I've got a then, yeah, tell me, and I will, I will happily test drive it for a week. But until then, I'm not going to bother. And any time I found a browser discrepancy within Opera, I've just kind of gone, nah, <laughs> probably yeah. not, yeah, not going to be matter, an issue. Yeah. These people yeah. don't matter. They're not real human beings, the people do you actually anyway. Do you actually uh, test for an Opera? Because no. I used to yeah, Out of habit, I just kind of, yeah, Firefox, Opera, Chrome, and Explorer, just because it's another, I mean, there are, there are others as well, but. I you know just what we should do. We should all download it and use it for a week. And, and we'll be like the, 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 the most traffic right. that site's had. In a year, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that there are it's lovely, like four yeah. people. Yeah, they're gonna, yeah. yeah, they're gonna be getting the cakes. That's like four people using our browser this week, and then right, like, we gonna... be like, oh, they've gone. I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna do it, and then you're gonna do it. Oh, well, yeah. to be honest, yeah. I'm looking at their Wikipedia page, and they said Opera was one of the first browsers to support cascading style sheets. Oh, good for them. So not the first, wow. but one of the first. It's Fifteen years ago, That's fifty. I know, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but it's funny actually. Because there are some people that are so loyal and remember actually, that yeah. day how the amazing thing, it was that the they didn't go elsewhere. The thing that's funny with it is it does use the um, oh, what is it? It uses the WebKit engine now, doesn't it? Yeah, because Chrome's branched away from that, haven't they? Uh, well, C- Chrome, yeah, so Chrome are now using... Is it uh, Blink? Well, Google, yeah. Uh, but then it should be, I'll confirm it will be follow Google. And, and Opera is, is going to be implementing Blink as well. Not as well as Chrome. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> this is this is crazy. So it's it's doing, it's doing literally just a copy now of Chrome. We've become a lot more opinionated in our podcast. Well, yeah, we have. Yeah, I think that's we, fine, we, yeah. Yeah. Uh, The first, the first... <laughs> I don't know. We must be nearly up up at fifty now. No, let me check the stats because I think we are. I think this is like forty nine. Um, this will be yeah, yeah, also forty nine. Oh wow, we've got the fiftieth episode coming up soon, guys. Do you know what? I think I've been on maybe the last the last three, and we haven't actually acknowledged that we've gone past our year anniversary. Oh, we haven't. Um, we were that was supposed to be like wow. a big show that for whatever. I think we were all busy and ill and stuff. <laughs> we yeah, just didn't sure. that week. We didn't have the big anniversary show, but yeah, well done, guys. Well, I think, I think fifty. Yeah. I think fifty episodes should probably do it. I don't think you know. I think we could do it on episodes because fifty episodes. So where are we at now then? Forty nine. Mm-hmm. This will be, and then this 50, is it. oh wow. So okay. you know, I think fifty episodes is going to be a big time, and you still so haven't I've... bought a t shirt, Lou. All right, oh, I, I will sort this out. But we I need, think we, we need. need pictures. To, <laughs> I think we really need to open the floor out then to the people. You know, we get a lot of feedback, and there are really nice people that listen to this show. You know, it's a. Big one for us the next one, you know. What's what would what should we make? Let's just do a special one. What, yeah, yeah. What yeah, could we do for the big? We could 50? make music. Make music. Make audio really? love. Oh, I have found actually a one link quickly. Um, this looks pretty cool. Uh, back in the days when I actually had to use Windows full time uh, at a certain workplace, um, you know, it was you know was bit, it was a bit annoying having to use like you know the Windows command line. And you could use like Sigwin and stuff like that, but that's quite bloated and a bit overkill for what you could use is just something like Gal. And Gal is literally a compiled version of a lot of Unix resources like mm-hmm. LS, yeah. uh, Grep and all that, which run on window on the Windows platform. So you can use the command line or the command prompt. In your use, command window, yeah. In a command window, same, using the same tools that you would ah. use in the Unix box, which is awesome. Um, they have loads. I mean, they have actually they have the Bash scale scripts. You can use Bash. You can use Gzip. You can use Putty. You can use uh, you know uh, Serial, uh, Wget, Vim, Grep, Move, Copy, Remove Dirt. So Did all you, the stuff you're used to. 
Did you guys have to do much for the old uh, bash bug? that came out did you uh, find that you had I, I to just, do you know what I just updated uh, you know I mean that's to be with the thing about not having I didn't compile anything from source or my own thing I, I updated my, my boxes all my boxes just kept, yeah. kept them up to date for you know I mean I keep them up to date weekly anyway but like that that when that came out um, yeah I mean it was like, and I've got a video I don't know if I've already we've already talked about it but in the show notes but there was a really interesting video on how it came about and why it came about I'll put that in the show notes which is quite cool um, but yeah, so I just did that, and then obviously on the Mac, um, I was using um, Bash Four, which is like the Brew compiled version of it, and they were pretty good at updating as well. So I just did that, and that was it, really. How about you guys? Yeah, I just tested. Yeah, there's a I found an online, online resource that or not even online resource. Yeah, it was kind of it was just gave a you like script, a wasn't stuff it? to yeah. see. Yeah, to see if if you were vulnerable, and I wasn't vulnerable on my DigitalOcean box apparently. So. Um, yeah, yeah which I thought was strange because I hadn't updated anything, I and it was Dig- in existence. I think DigitalOcean actually update for you some like major right. release, which is really good of them because yeah. you'd think you'd yeah. think so, wouldn't you? Because they're they're pretty much on top of the game, yeah. aren't they? At the moment, they're uh, they're they're doing a good job. Oh, I had an, an email. Oh no, sorry, this is no, that's something different. I thought that was no, it's Cloudflare as opposed to DigitalOcean. Oh, Ocean, Cloudflare, sorry. beautiful Cloud. But yeah. it's quite funny actually because we don't talk about DigitalOcean when we started looking at it. Like I remember you started using it this time last year, and time has flown. Yeah. And it's still, yeah, great. I mean, you pay $5 yeah. a month and you yeah. get good resources. I mean, now, you know, bandwidth, all the bandwidth for the sites going through that. And, yeah, we don't even have to pay for bandwidth. Like, it's the fiver that we pay. I pay for all my box. So I do find, actually, and I don't know whether this is just because where my box is located in New York, um, that ssh and in, like the login authentication for that takes a little while. Right. But that could be just because... It's where the location is, and maybe I'll move my box if I can be bothered. Have you, have you guys had to um, install SSL certificates on a DigitalOcean server? No. I haven't yet. No. I'm getting to a stage yeah. where I think one of my clients is asking for it, so I'm going to I'm going to do that I'm on a his bit, box. I'm a bit concerned about that. I spoke to um, a company that my my company work with, and they and they said I'll go with Media Temple because we also use Media Temple a lot because the whole process of that is far easier. So, um, I mean, because the project still hasn't think, gone live yet, I still haven't got it. Done I think yet, with SSH, SSL certificates, like you know, the, the the two things about it is that it's giving the fact that the person we know that the person's okay and we're securing that connection. Um, one thing I would say is you can buy extra IP addresses that link to the same box because I know that SSL certificates they like having their own IP address. Um, they get confused, like if you have uh, a shared box where you have that one IP address that then you know you do. So maybe think about. This having another IP address, attaching another IP address, unique IP address, just for that for that one thing to the box, so it looks like it's its own uh, server. It's it's still a thing that I haven't seen through from start to finish yet, like installing an SSL certificate. So I'm, I'm still not entirely sure what to expect or what exactly it is that I need to do. So I'm hoping when it when it gets to the point that I can get some decent support mm. with it. But it, it's I don't know. Have you have you guys all done it? It's, no, like because I was looking at it the other day just because the like. One of the sites I've put live quite recently, he, he's kind of, he's very concerned about his SEO performance and then he read the standard stuff or like SSL is now quite, yeah. or now SSL is being treated by Google as an indicator as to a How site's worthiness. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so he was, he was inquiring about that and then, yeah, um, I've, he's not gone any further with it. I kind of said, yes, it is possible, but you're going to be spending money because you don't want to self sign something because you're still going to get warnings. Well, that's um, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. that I read said, just don't bother doing that. Yeah. It's not, it's not worth the, yeah, it's not, just not worthwhile. Yeah, so I basically said to him, like, for for the sake of however much it's going to cost you to buy an SSL like once a year and pay for me to install it for you, you're probably best off spending that money elsewhere or spending that time elsewhere because there are many other things that you can do that can help. Like, so was he only doing it just for the SEO boost? Then, like, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're selling we're selling um, stuff on there, but it's going. It's not taking payment on our site. It's taking payment on PayPal. So oh, it's not going. Yeah. It's not I mean, important, yeah. and it it doesn't from a security standpoint. It doesn't need it, um, but he just wants it because. Of the the SEO benefits, which is which is understandable, um, but I've yeah, I kind of suggested to him, look, the time and the money that you'd spend on this, you're best off spending on traditional marketing to get your business out there. That's it. To be honest, um, in the short term, and if if in, if you do need an extra push in a year's time or something, then yeah, we'll look at it then. But I, I said I'm happy to do it for you, but this is this is what I recommend, and yeah, use your money elsewhere. A bit disappointing, like well, not disappointing, but Stripe still. Stripe's obviously a very good API, and they're still saying, "Yeah, get use SSL as well." And I was kind really? of thinking, oh, yeah, they they seem to think you need it on top." And I suppose it doesn't ever hurt to have no, it." No, no, not at all. But 
You've, yeah, you've I was kind of hoping really... that it would all be hand. Sorry, mate. Got to really, haven't you? That's a problem because you're actually taking the details on your site rather than. Oh, did you do that with, you, with Stripe? Yeah, you do. You do. Oh, okay. You yeah. will submit. Well, you will submit the form. The page will actually have be unencrypted, um, which can be kind of yeah. scary because someone I could then say like, Lou, if you if I was like in the middle of you in the connection, I could then actually rewrite the page with your with your code on, make it so it's key logging all the stuff that you're doing. So all the information that mm. they type in, I could actually get access to. It's fiddly, which, isn't it? Which is the annoying it thing. Is which, which is the pain because it, you want to provide that integrated experience with online payment systems, but you don't want to have to deal mm. with the problems of actually handling these payment details and yeah. you know, like SSL having that encrypting it, then making sure that they can't actually change, modify the payload um, is good. But it, yeah, it can be a bit of a pain. And also, I mean, it's a lot of money, and, and it's more CPU power processing power on the box and stuff. But I think uh, you know, I think the thing is, is like and more it's, communication if you. I, if you're not, obviously, because I listen to this and it's like, I'm wanting to have a look at like self signing, which is actually pointless because the whole point of it is that you have someone like Veritime. Well, this is it. Are. I mean, it, it, it does one of the, it does one of the two jobs, doesn't it? Where it encrypts the thing, which is good because yeah. say like, I know for certain that this is my box and then I'm doing yeah. this encrypt thing. You can't now read what I'm going, what I'm doing to the box, but it doesn't do the fact of, I know that this is the person that I'm actually wanting this to talk to. This is the reputable. This is yeah, the person yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm actually talking to it. Yeah. But it is fiddly. I'm, no, I haven't done it since uh, yeah, I've moved over to DigitalOcean to I haven't got anything that really justifies it. Um, Not Michael Bud. Um, Michael Bud. <laughs> uh, I'm still working on that buy me a beer scripts or whatever that people put on their sites. But when I get that done, then uh, yeah, maybe. But did yeah, you ever get your redesign done? No, he didn't. I'm, I'm, just looking now. Little... I'm just looking now. Uh, no, has he got right. the spinny logo still? Uh, no, no, it's not like spinny anymore. Oh. <laughs> did you have a marquee oh. on it once? <laughs> I've got yeah, still got it. <laughs> she got Marky there now. Yeah, messing yeah. around, me messing around with some John Mayer riff. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm in the same boat. My my personal website has progressed zero this I'm year. Mine. I haven't done any blogging or anything at all in a long time. I knew he did the other day. I knew he did something on it um, on the AES um, algorithm, but I, t- I don't have time. I'm probably not going to blog for a. Another good six months. I say I want to thought. So I don't think I don't think it's essential, is it, to ha- to have well, just because just because I am a developer, it doesn't mean I need to have my own. It's nice fun. to have. Yeah, I yeah, it'd be it, ideal, yeah. but you know, it's a project in itself, think, and it's you know, it's not something you want to do half heartedly. No, I started having a few questions from like the discuss forums and stuff, and it's like I started helping out a guy who's like who started doing one of my. Um, uh, blog items on there, he started trying to use it and stuff, and he's like, got stuck. And I was like, oh. okay, I started trying to help him. I'm like, well, I'm not getting paid for it, I'm doing that with goodness of my heart. And yeah, I've got a bit fiddly, and I've had a few recently, and I was like, I just haven't got a chance to reply to him. To be honest yeah. with you. Well, did I tell um, you about about a year ago? I had some guy actually phone me. Like some <laughs> some guy in Israel was uh, he found I can't remember what the which which article it was, but I think it was. It was on, yeah. I can't remember what the, what the the thing was on. I think it was a jQuery thing or something, like Parallax or something. And he couldn't work yeah. out how to get it working on his site. So he sent me a couple of messages through the blog, and I responded to them on the blog, and uh, and kind of I thought that was fine. And then I was like, so I came home from work on like a Thursday afternoon, I'm like in my bedroom doing some stuff, and then my phone goes, and it's like a an Israel number. So and I, I pick it up, I'm like, hello, and then like nothing. It's like, hi, this is like da da da, and. I was like, sorry, I don't wow. recognise your name. He's like, yeah, I, I posted on your your oh, blog. Dear, um, you didn't you didn't respond to my latest message, and it's quite important. Oh. Could, could you help me? And I was like, I I, I didn't want to be Stalker. a dick to him, but it, like, I was kind of, I was like, uh, I'm sort of in the middle of something at the moment. How did Mind you get your I, number? Because I've got it. I had it. I don't know if I still have it. Actually, oh, I should probably take that off. Um, oh, on my on my kind of my business card site, um, it. It's not on there anymore. Mm. No, it is on there. <laughs> I'll tell I, I never answer my <laughs> I never answer by my mobile to numbers that I don't recognise. Yeah, I just, uh, that's why you don't answer me either. then. Oh, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> don't recognise me. Awkward. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that's not. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's the reason. Uh, yeah. Let me tell. That's a quick question, actually. Uh, you guys have all upgraded to your seventy, right? Yes. Yep. To what? Did it? Uh, your seventy. The latest. Oh, uh, no, I haven't. Oh, actually, okay. because I just haven't had the time to yet. It's but pretty. For you that have, like, did you is pick it, one oh, up with the open dot, um, Photoshop? Oh, is that, 
I thought it was Yosemite. But no. Oh, that it's Yosemite, but I I called it accidentally Yosemite, yeah. Yosemite as well. I'm like, hmm, <laughs> Yosemite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I tried to open Photoshop, but it, it wouldn't open. It's like basically I had to download some patch to... It's like some sort of Java legacy thing. Oh, and yes, I've had to do this as well with uh, PHP Storm, that you need to use the Java SE6, and it's, yeah, yeah a Mac patch. Really weird. Like... That's a bit of a fail, isn't it? But um, <laughs> Bye, Ed. Did you not have that very well? No, I didn't have that. It worked. Yeah, it worked fine straight away. Yeah, um, I did have an issue with, I think it was Git. Um, it had to reinstall right. Git because it got rid of that. So, yeah, apart from that, it's okay. no issues whatsoever. I, I, had the, I had the luxury of reading a few tweets and messages and stuff about things that weren't working properly. So, ah. I was just like, oh, maybe I won't bother. Uh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. love Yosemite. Oh, yeah. I like, yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah I mean, so, you thing, recommend that I do do it then? I do, I do recommend. I, I love it. I, I think do a full install, though. You know, like yeah, I think because I just did not go. I'm pretty sure my Mac's running a little bit slower than it was, to be honest with you. Um, just do a full clean. Sometimes it's just good to just yeah, do a clean. I, I normally every couple of months just do a full install clean. I think that's probably a bit too really over the top. But it, you know, if you've got your backups in place right, then yeah, you just you can literally drop it. I mean, I, I've up you it's know, I, with Dropbox, I've got the ter- I've got I have the terabyte now. I paid a seven pound a, a month. And I just have everything on Dropbox, and I can just nuke my machine, and then boom, start again, and you do notice a difference. And there's yeah. a couple, I mean, along with Brew, like you've got Homebrew, obviously, but you've also got this thing called Brewcasts, and this saves a lot of time. Like, so it's an extension on top of Homebrew that allows you then to things like Chrome and everything like that. Um, yeah. When I was in the Windows world, there was something called Nnight, which I used quite a bit, uh, and you could build up. This is the Nnight, so. And like this allowed you to build up um, like installers, like saying I want Chrome, I want Skype, I want you know iTunes here, boom, 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 and it would just download and install them for you. Um, Homecast, a homebrew cast is pretty similar, where you have the command line saying I'll oh, brewcast and install Google Chrome, brewcast uh, and install something else, and you can then just install things really quickly, and you'll get your machine back up to what it was before, you know. In the matter of like pre hour, well, an hour uh, we so. use this when we formatted my old laptop. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, I, remember yes. I remember this now. It's really useful. It really is, and I mean, I use uh, Homebrew Cast a lot because I like fonts and everything. Like, I, I, I'm a fan of like the Deja Sun font. I think it is. Uh, yeah, Deja Sans font. I mean, because that's another thing. Actually, what fonts do you use for uh, coding? Coding. Uh, yeah. Like, do you have a do you have a preference on like a font you use? I just use the one that Sublime has as default. I don't even know what it is. Oh, is it? It's probably um, Menlo. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is I the one I use. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan. This is actually an Android. I think it was Google that made this font. Um, I put it in the show notes. But like the Mono one, I, I is really nice. Like for the command line, um, and right. I, I definitely recommend it. Like I, I use. I, I just installed it using Cars because it's a lot easier doing it that way. Um, but no, I mean, they've got a lot of casts at the moment. They've got, they're building up a big package up of it and it's just makes things easier installing stuff. I use, it, I use Z show. I can't remember what font I, I chose one of their themes, but I can't remember what font. Oh, the font's probably, uh, that's it. Do you use iTerm or do you use, yeah. um, yeah, iTerm's awesome, I, isn't it? iTerm too. Yeah. And with, yeah like, lovely. and with like the tabs you can have and you can then space things out. You can, you know, it really does like make things a lot easier. We're at an hour, aren't we? We're we are at an hour. We are at an hour. Yeah. Uh, I feel kind of bad for Fraser. He's just gone off to get a uh, power cable, and I'm thinking yeah, let, he'll be to make dodgy on that later. Anyway, he will be, yeah. Cybercrime, so That's true. A lot of cybercrime. That's what Fraser does. A lot of cybercrime. He's just thinking, oh no, what's going on here? You know? Yeah. I, 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 I would, I would say guy. definitely that you know we need to need to make a plan for the big fifty. Yes, definitely. And, uh, I mean, and we need some input. Come on, guys. What do what do what do you want to? What should we do for the big fifty? Yeah. Anything you want us to talk about, or do you want us to shut up with like Mickey party has, hats on? Or oh, I, I think we should do a drinking shots. one. I reckon a drinking one would be good fun. Oh, loads yeah. of drinking and loads of lies about special guests we're going to have on the show. Like Bill Gates is coming yes. on. Yeah, yeah. Yep. we know. No, I'm actually uh, quite. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty Steve happy. Steve Jobs. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. the podcast that just goes there. That's our tag. Make sure you tune in next week. We're going to have Stephen Hawking, Steve Jobs, and Bill Gates. Massive fan of the show. Kurt Cobain might come on as well. Yeah, he, he, um, he, he's, he's rumoured to be making an appearance. We're, yeah, we're just negotiating yeah. uh, terms and stuff. But, uh, and and a new funny gonna intro gonna by play, Robin Williams. The are going to play the opening <laughs> and closing music. That's what they're... That's what they're yeah. Oh, dear. Because yeah. it smells oh, like wow. team spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, 
that's all I've had to say anyway. I, I really have nothing else. I mean, um, I'm really sorry, Fraser. We literally, <laughs> there's nothing else really we can. I don't know. Have you got anything else you want to te- like speak about this week? Uh, not that I can think of. No, I think yeah, everything's. I think we've done quite well without yeah. an agenda. We've yeah. kind of we've, we've, we've yeah. smashed an hour out of the bag like that's a, an yeah. hour and hour and ten minutes there, like a bunch of bosses. Boss man, yeah. yeah. So, no, yeah, I mean, we, we, one final thing, I guess we just we kind of made a plan yesterday that we're going to continue to try and aim to get one out a week, aren't yeah. we? So yeah, yeah. Uh, this particular recording time it. seems to work well for all of us, doesn't it? So definitely, yeah. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice to be back on regularly as well. Yeah. So I'm going to struggle to record next weekend because it's my mum's 60th birthday, so I'm going away with the family for and that. And we're not so invited, that. which I right. find yeah, still no. pretty rude. Nice yeah. to know where your priorities are, Fraser. Sorry. Nice to know where your priorities are. <laughs> but in family first I oh know it's disgraceful yeah no not in France uh, the, my yeah. sister lives in Brighton so my folks come oh, over right, and, yeah, and, yeah my, we've, we're putting them up in a hotel for the weekend and oh, kind of taking them out for dinner right. and stuff so yeah that'd be nice yeah. so I'm going to go and crash at my sister's on the sofa and uh, yeah and have a few beers yeah. in Brighton next weekend very nice uh, we should also mention that we now freelance as hedge trimmers as well so we yeah, do like oh ideas. amazing yeah we kind of we, we touched on it briefly didn't we but yeah we didn't kind of yeah. go into how amazing we were at that have you been back today? Have been working on it again? Yeah. I had a little look. I just wanted to go and check that I hadn't burnt the house down. I know we put yeah. water over the fire, but... I was like, yeah, because you were still smoking right. when we left, though, wasn't it, the fire? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, we, we do that. So, mainly in the UK, but we will travel if, yeah. uh, you, know, if you pay for the expenses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. The good I'll times. send you the pictures. You can put it in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right then, guys. Cool. Well, it's been an awesome podcast, and um, yeah. I'll speak to you guys next week. You certainly will. Okay, guys. Bye. All the best. See you later. Bye. See you Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Three Devs and a Maybe. You can contact us at contact at three devs and a maybe dot com, or follow us on Twitter at the number three devs and a maybe.